All right. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 13 of the Young Old Heads podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tommy, aka TV Sports Cards. I'm here with my co host and legendary card collector and flipper, Maxwell. Max, Cards Max. Cards Max, how are you doing? I'm doing great. We are inching closer and closer to the national. We are one week to one week away as of today. Yeah, we're Seven recording days. this on uh, July 20th, Wednesday. This will come out this weekend. Yes, and it'll be even closer to the national when this re- is received by public ears. And I'm ready. Yes, and I am leaving tomorrow morning. I'm going on a trip with Ledex to Cooperstown. I'm leaving to bright and early tomorrow, driving from Chicago to Cooperstown. I'm going to be there for the weekend. There's like a little card show there. We're going to be set up by the autograph booths. So we're going to be. I'm going to be there to see Big Poppy get inducted. That's going to be awesome. And then uh, driving down from there to Atlantic City for the full week. And in Atlantic City, we're going to be able to be hanging out with one of the best sellers of cards i've ever met in my entire life a guy that i've known now for almost two years which is kind of crazy um you know him from his famous galaxy mat from his best sales you will ever see baseball cards on twitter we're here with the man himself logan ak logan's league logan how are you doing good good how are you guys doing thank you for uh having me on today i know your time is valuable we're we're happy that you can make some time for us before one of your sales i know uh you're a busy guy these days with uh so can you tell us a little bit about like what you do just in in a high level sense yeah so i cards full time um i run stack sales it's i run them for two weeks at a time and then i'll ship out for one week and i've been doing that i think since like october of last year now so we're approaching a year of uh of stack sales sweet dude i i know i start we started dming way back in i think september 2020 which seems like yes. a lifetime ago right now yes but we both kind of started out i was like we both just had childhood collections that we were just trying to sell a little bit off start collecting again figure out the world of cards and it's been awesome getting to get back into it with you seeing where you've you know kind of specialized in your baseball card sales um I know Max even consigns with you, which is a big honor. I send, I've started sending you cards because I'm too lazy to sell them myself. But uh, <laughs> I, what is your, can you give us a general strategy of like what, what's, wh- who is Logan the seller? What do you like to sell? What do you, what do you like to consign? What do you like to keep for yourself, maybe? I, I think Logan the seller, uh, I mean, I'll sell anything baseball card wise, anything from, I mean, like $2 to uh, $1,000. Like I, I truly enjoy having like that big range because I feel like that draws interest from the most people. And then if like somebody decides, oh, like I've been buying five to $10 cards, I want to buy a hundred or $200 card and they bought for me, then they're going to be more likely to buy that hundred or 200 card dollar card for me and feel comfortable about that. And the stuff, I mean, I collect, uh, sadly, I am a huge uh, Jared Kellenick collector. Uh, uh, I have some nice Julio's and I, I really, because of you two, I now have started a meme Mariner binder, which, uh, is from all the guys, the past of all their blunders of draft picks, like Jeff Clement, uh, Jesus Montero to, to name a few, Dustin Ackley. I have, I have some very nice Dustin Ackley cards that used to be worth a lot more than they are now. Never forget about Dustin Ackley. That has been the number one, my number one favorite thing I've heard of a product of our podcast is Logan has started a binder. That is amazing. Max, how did you and Max, how did you and Logan link up initially? I had a spicy hot 3 a.m. take on the economic value of PSA nines. And Logan crept into my direct messages asking for an explanation and I defended my take, and we had some fun card discussion and banter. Yeah, Logan, I mean, do you remember that, Logan? Yeah, I do. No, I was. I think it was. It was in January yes, of 2021. Yes, it was uh, like right around New Year's, or like a couple days after New New Year's, because I was at uh, my girlfriend's, uh, her family's lake house at the time, and I I remember asking Max like. I saw him like tweet that. And that was at a time where I didn't really know that much about cards. I'd only been back for like five or six months. Yeah. You were serial DMing everyone at the time. 
I yeah oh yeah I I I was always really into like asking questions and I was just like trying to figure out okay like what are the next buys or like why what am I doing wrong like why why do you think this and then Max and I just became really good friends after that and now and also on the converse I mean there's I didn't mean to cut you off there's times where like people you know comment and constructively dissent and give opinions but like that was definitely even now like one of the few times where I you know, I've gotten a DM saying like, oh, explain this further and with a genuine sense of inquisitiveness. So even to that day, that stands out. I remember I was, I want to say I was moving back into college or I was moving something. I remember I was in North Carolina, but I wasn't in my- You're always group. moving around. I'm, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> I'm a busy guy. Yeah, but that, I love that story. And Logan, that's why I like, I feel like me and you vibe too, uh, like early on, like we both didn't know much, but just knew that we had to ask people to get figure out what the information was like figure out what's going on in the world you can you can't figure it out online and that's something that me and max always talk about it's like there's not one place to go to become a card expert there's not one website you can go there's not one youtube no. channel or anything no and i and i think like a big thing is you ask those questions and you can formulate your own opinions and that's w- how it should be like you don't you can take some tidbits from one person to like the to the next person like i give max a bad time for cracking out his psa nines but that's it's funny. I'm actually going to crack out a PSA what nine many? here, PSA nine here shortly because the upside of it, it there's just a great upside to it. Is and it the Francisco Alvarez? No, it is. I sold that one. No, it's the Noel V uh, Bowman Chrome Gold Shimmer Auto. I'm. Okay. I, I think that has a good shot at a PS. It should have got a PSA ten. So I'm we. I'm having a certified sports card to crack it out and uh, re- resubmit it for me. Not doing it. The haters wrong. (laughs) But uh, Logan, something that uh, you that reminded me of, of like talking about asking the right questions, figuring like trust, like learning to trust yourself, getting to a point where you kind of internally feel like you know enough to like make a big Mm -hmm. purchase. Do you remember what like the first card that you spent a decent chunk of change on? What that card was and what your thought process was on that? Yes, it was a Corey Seager. 2016 tops chrome blue psa 10 so that was i was it was in actually i think it was around january or february of 2021 and that was when i was like big into court like Corey seager was like oh the dodgers like he's starting short shop like this is awesome and it was a really low pop card i think it was like 400 dollars. so that was like my big first purchase on ebay and i was just really into co- color match and like the veterans of tops chromes like the rookies being very undervalued and it also taught me a good lesson because I had a $900 offer after he hit a couple home runs and I didn't sell it. And I ended up just breaking even on it like a, a year later. So it was a really good learning. It was a really good like example of, okay, like this is, was a good buy, but like to also like, if there's an offer there, like I and I can make some money on it, like take it because it wasn't like that rare a card to where I could always come back around and buy it again. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at right now in collecting is like, I'm okay parting with things that I know I'm going to see again. So like when the Warriors won, when the Warriors are making their playoff run and they won, like I did sell off some of my stuff that I knew was very common cards that were kind of very liquid sure. at the time of the playoffs. And I was like, I'm going to see these again. Like, I'm not really worried about that. Yeah, um, most definitely. Max, I don't know if I've ever asked you what your first big card you ever bought is. Do you have an answer to that question? I think yeah. I might. I think Ooh, I might know this. Yeah, he knows it. Um, 2019 <laughs> Topps Chrome, Vlad Guerrero Jr. 1999, or you know, 1999 retro design inspired um, Vlad Guerrero Jr. autograph numbered to 99. Um, I did bought this in June of 2021. It was three hundred dollars. The surface was a little imperfect. And Logan is the full time. No, he wasn't full time, I think, mm-hmm. at this point. But I'm like, Logan, you should buy this as a good deal, you know. And I'm thinking like, oh, wait, no, I can buy it. And then I can buy and sell it. And I ended up flipping it for like 100 bucks or so. You know, the surface issues were exaggerated. It graded a nine eventually by the subsequent new owner. But uh, that was a big leap of faith in trusting myself and recognizing that you know the knowledge that i have with cards and that anyone can make a play so to speak with a card and that was what kind of made me become more okay i can buy and sell stuff not just 
upgrade everything. Yeah. But and... the car that got me is the 2019 Tier 1 Luis Severino Auto that I've talked about before. Yeah, we love Luis Severino here at the Yellow yes, we do. podcast. Um, but Injured. yeah, yeah. Oh, get get healthy, Luis Severino. Get out, this is a get healthy, Luis Severino. We yes, need to get him. Don't. He needs to get on the pod. We need to have him on. I think. Did I tell you that I saw Nestor Cortez this weekend? No, you did not. What happened? Uh, nothing, because uh, <laughs> I didn't meet him. But I saw him. He was at the Garden State show signing autographs for people. Absolutely riveting story there, Max. Love yeah, um, we, breathe, we breathe the same air. Yes. Well, Logan. Um, <laughs> Something that me and Max like to talk about a lot is kind of like just what it, what the experience of collecting is like. What's what's it like being a human being in the card world? And you're someone who has a pretty interesting kind of story, I think, of how you got in like in the last year and a half, your timeline of, you know, getting back into cards, trusting yourself enough to start buying some bigger cards and then mm-hmm. eventually making the decision to start full time buying and selling cards. So can you tell us a little bit about that journey you went on? Yeah, I mean, I think it started when it actually kind of funny. It started from I saw Phil Hughes's YouTube videos with cards, and I was like, oh, like I kind of want to get back into cards. This would be fun. And then um, I saw that Jake T. Jake T. was in his like YouTube like live, and they were going back and forth, or Instagram live, and they're going back and forth. And Jake said he sold on Twitter, so I went and found his Twitter, bought a few cards from him, then started started following some people long story short i pulled the luis robert short print that was selling for like 300 dollars at the time out of blaster box and i was like oh like hmm maybe there's some money to be made here but then i started like buying just a bunch of just like luis robert first or like bowman like paper rookie cards and i was and they were just sitting in a box and i was like this is this is getting like overwhelming ridiculous like i'm spending way too much money on like cards that like i don't even care about so then I just started like, I was like, oh, like I see these people doing sack sales. And I was like, oh, like I'll, I'll give it a shot. And it was January of 2021. I had my first stack sale and I was like selling like 20, like five cent cards. And like, it was awesome. Like I cleared out so much. Then I bought like a big card, like after that. And then I like a couple months later, flipped that, like flipped that card and made a few hundred dollars off there. And I was like, okay, I want to keep doing sack sales. Kept doing that. And then come, I guess like last October, I didn't really like my job. I was like, ah, I'm just going to like, I can sell some cards and I can try to like hold myself over until I need to find another job. And then I had some people reach out to me about consignment selling for them. And now we're here today and I run stack sales every couple of weeks. Yeah. And that's an awesome story. I love that you, the journey that you went on from like getting back into it to where you're at now is something I think is really relatable for people. I mean, I don't think people are at your level of stack sales, obviously, but like knowing that you just started a year and a half ago, really getting back into it, it does take some time to get to overcome the learning curve. But that's something that like, if you consume content and interact and ask the right people with the right questions, you're going to get there. And um, oh, yeah. I, for sure. I, I definitely agree with that. And I, and I think that's just like, like I I've told people before, like I said, I sold 25 cent cards. Like you, you all, if you start from the bottom and yeah, you lose some money up front. I mean, that's with any, like any good business to begin you more times than not, like you're trying to make a name for yourself, trying to make a brand. You'll like not, you're not going to make money right away. It's like continue, continue being, continuous about like what you do i think is like a huge thing of of doing more sales being interactive on twitter just trying to grow not like giving up like i've had a couple times like i don't know like a year ago like i had really bad sales and i was like okay like what am i doing wrong and i was like how am i going to change this what cards do i need to buy so that people would like and want to buy from me i think it's just there's always going to be ups and downs but it's just persevering and not realizing okay like at some point like i can get to like get to whatever you want to say like my stack sales or ryan stack sales or anybody else that is like big on twitter or instagram like their sales like it's attainable for anybody yeah for sure um max i feel like a commonality with not every big seller but most big sellers is that you know they did have the hustler start from the bottom and now we're here you know aspect and mentality and when you were having your small stack sales did you necessarily think that you'd get to this magnitude of 
not only the traffic, but the dollar value items that you are buying and selling? No, not at all. And I think mostly I, I, I truly didn't. I was just doing it because I wanted to clear out space for my cards. I wanted to buy some diff- different cards. I wanted to try to go in a new direction. I never thought I would get to this point. And I was happy with even, I don't know, some weeks selling 500 to 600 cards and then only resulting like in a thousand dollars or something like that's where it began with and i was doing so much more work at that time but i was happy because i was like okay i can go buy some other cards that i'll enjoy more than these yeah Mm -hmm. yeah for sure uh something me and max like to talk about is like liquidity like how easy it is to to sell a card and how easy it is to go from hey this card's worth 30 dollars to getting 30 dollars in your pocket for that card i think your twitter account with that which has what like eleven thousand followers now you're we're cl- close, we're getting, we're, close. We'll get you. We're we'll get, close. We're happen. close. Young um, old heads push. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, our, our our army. Uh, no. So so that your Twitter account, and the reason why I like to send cards to you and like is because they sell and they sell quick and there's not like it's no like fee. You know, it's Twitter. You're you're sending the money straight to you. It's not eBay where there's a fifteen percent commission and everything else involved. Um, For sure. Do you think about that? Like, do you th- is that something that you pitch to people? Do you have to like pitch people on consigning with you? Like, hey, my cards sell, or is that just something where like people just notice that your cards sell on your account and they reach out to you about it? I think it's more the latter of they notice cards sell on my account because I don't, I'm not always advertising that I do consignments because I and I have, I've probably I think I've sold for probably like twenty people or so, but my biggest thing is those people have come back to me and they want, and they want to continue to sell for them. Like, that's where I'm like, okay, like I'm doing the right, I'm doing the right thing here. And if someone new reaches out, like I'll tell them, okay, like this is my process. This is how I do it. And a big thing for me is like, I don't, because people get caught up on like all comps, this, this, and that is like, if somebody's going to be like, okay, like, I'll, and I'll work with somebody like on higher end cards, like, okay, I want to sell for this price. I'm like, sure, that's fair. But if it's like, I don't know, Juan Soto base rookie card. That's what, $20, 15, 10, 15, $20. And they're like, okay, like I want to sell this for 40. I'm like, no, like it's not how it went to work because this, I try to have the best deals possible where I can still make the person I'm selling for money or myself money. And I can have buyers come back to me as well. For sure. Um, I like your whole, you are someone who has like a great idea of what your brand is, what the Logan's league brand is. And like, you really stick to what it is and you don't try to, I don't know, make a political comment on your Twitter account or something, or make some like make a really controversial comment that might rub some people the wrong way. Um, What, so can you give us a little insight into like your thought process behind your brand and like where you want to go with it? Like where, where in a year, you know, a year ago, you were in a completely different place than you are now. Yeah. And where you see yourself going in the next year or two? I think in the next year, I want to definitely have traffic on my YouTube. I, w- I want to. I only have one YouTube video. I've been, I mean, so it was almost a year ago now. So I definitely, I think that's my goal to really get that up and running. And uh, uh, I think with my brand is like you said, it was like instilled in me when I was on social media from a young age with my, with my dad is, are you okay with everybody seeing this tweet? Like if for some, like, and, and that's a huge thing for me. Like, I'm not, like you said, going to say anything political because, or say anything overly controversial. Yeah. I'll have baseball takes, but that's like, everybody has controversial baseball takes. Like that's fun. That's like our, to go back and forth on the timeline is fun, but it's a big thing to me is I want like at maybe in five, 10 years, Logan's league, like to there to be like a community where it's like, okay, like, I don't know, I have a discord or something, or like even have like my own website where people buy, sell. And I, I th- that's probably not poss- going to be possible, but that's like the idea of, okay, like if, people if i have like hosts here in washington my own trade night or something everybody feels welcome and there's n- nobody's judgment we're just buy sell, buy selling and trading cards and having fun yeah i love that i i think i love the idea of a discord uh i think i would totally be down to join that and get involved because you know i know the guys that you interact with we were actually i want to do a quick shout out me and me and logan were in my first ever twitter dm group 
with some yes. guys that are pretty legendary. Uh, Charles, who's actually been a guest on the podcast and designed our logo. Shout out, Charles. Shout out, um, Charles. Mitch, who does... Who, well, me and Max are definitely going to have to have Mitch on someday because Mitch does stack sales and collects cards in a way that I've never seen anyone else collect. And uh, Griff, shout out Griff. Um, and then I think Mason was in... Was Mason involved yeah, in Mason's, that chat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mason's He's an OG in, member. Yeah, Mason's in the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out that group chat. Um, we need to make it more active these days, but you know that was yes, created a I year agree. and a half, like almost yes, two years yeah. ago now. So yeah. the journeys that we've gone on since me, like starting from that point with each other, has been you know all over the place. So I love that we can still sometimes throw chats in there. Griff will be like, "Hey, how's everyone going?" Charles is like yeah. on Twitter every month, once a month nowadays. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do a quick shout out to them and transition the conversation a little bit from you know your future to your immediate future which mm -hmm. is what we teased at the beginning, which is the national coming up yes. in Atlantic city. You're traveling an incredible distance to Atlantic city. I had Max yes. explain how he was getting from long Island to Atlantic city last week. Can you tell me how you're getting from Seattle, Washington to Atlantic city? Uh, I am flying out with certified sports cars. Him and I are flying out on Wednesday morning. We are flying into Philly airport and Brand, our buddy Brandon is picking us up and we'll, we will be heading to the Airbnb after that. But it is about, I think, a six hour flight. Yep. And then another like two hour and change to the Atlantic yeah. City. So you're yep. you're so going to have a day, yeah. dude. You're going to have a day. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm used to being on the West Coast, used to those days of from full full day travel to the East Coast. So yeah, it, it, will, it will be it will be well worth it, though. I'm very, very excited for the National. Yeah, what hey Max? What are you going to be looking for at tables? Um, I think I'm just looking for it, any good deals with baseball. I, I think we kind of had the. I asked you yesterday, Max, what you're looking for, and it's on a high level, it's good deals. Like I don't think there's anything like. I mean, if I were to just point one thing, it'd be like I want some high end Noel V Marte stuff because I'm a huge Mariner homer, and I I think his stuff is very undervalued, and he's had a great last month after starting off very very slow to begin with but i think outside of like no lv stuff because julio stuff is like kind of now like getting to like its peak for for now for now he's mm -hmm. definitely gone definitely gone up uh i think anything for my sales like baseball wise is for sure what i'm looking for any good deals yeah and i think me and you buy and sell cards we have some mm -hmm. overlap in the types of stuff that we sell mm -hmm. but at least I'm thinking, you know, I'm holding in my hands right here a, a Todd Helton stained glass. I love the stained glass. It's so, and so cool. these are out of 25. I'm not sure if they are out of Ginter X or Ginter Regular, but I unnumbered out of 25. I think they're out of Ginter Regular. I think they're rip cards like out of Ginter, Ginter Regular, I'm pretty sure. Gotcha. And my thinking with a – if I see this card at a show, I, I bought it for $10 off Twitter, but for all six and purposes, very well a card that you can find at a show – of a rather not unpopular but more liquid name for me that's throw it up on ebay for 40 bucks hope someone presses bin and i am jumping on that at ten dollars and hoping that it gets its forever home for you that's not i you know i'm inclined to think that's not a card that you're going to jump after i mean i think at ten dollars though i would pro i would probably jump out interesting that. all right I think because of like what you said, I think I would put it up on Twitter for $30. I think with cards like that, it's like, I'll take a chance on it because I know I can get $10 for it. Like that. I, I truly believe on Twitter, I could get $10 for it. I break even, I, I, I move on. But I think like interesting stuff like that to where it's like, you, you're, you're looking for like, for like, I feel like for stack sellers or like what you do with selling on eBay, we're looking for like the number, like the color stuff. We're going, we're going through those boxes to where it's like, okay, we're probably going to buy a couple, a couple higher end cards and, and maybe get that stuff like thrown in. And then that brings us down on, on what we spent on that higher end card. Yeah. One of the, my favorite deals that I did this past weekend it, at the Garden State show was I was trading away my red disco fast break Desmond Bain out of 49 PSA 10 is a little bit i love desmond bain every every listener knows i love desmond bain on the memphis grizzlies and i know it was a little bit harder to get the full value out of it and i traded it for two psa 10 acunas 
and me and my trading partner were a little bit apart. You know, we we're very, very close to making the deal. And I'm like, hey, throw in this cello uh, NFL prism and we got a deal worth like 20 bucks. He threw it in and then boom, that's very easy to move. So even just getting some of these like, you know, easy $10, $20 cards or cards that are literally just sitting for other people. Heck, I mean, I don't sell wax often. Some wax, you know, it is a labor and a chore to find wax if you don't have a demographic. Or, you know, Todd Helton stained glass if you aren't proactive in moving it. So taking some of these extra cards as throw-ins is definitely a little bit enticing and can make be a little bit of lube for a deal to get done. I love I love the to- toss-ins. That's something that I think people don't totally see how that, ha- like, I don't think they see the behind the scenes of that that often where, like, you see a card with a price in a case at a show. If you don't, if you've never collected cards before, you probably think that that's a hard price, like a like a normal grocery store price. But you know, people are the people behind the desk at a dealer's thing are just people. They bought that card probably for less than they're pricing it for. So coming to a, like an agreement, telling them where you're coming from on it too, I think is something that Logan, you're really good at doing. Like, hey, you're a very transparent seller on certain things. Like you're not. You're not someone who's like really possessive of like where you're getting your cards from or like stuff like that. I know you buy a lot of card shows, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, that's a good, like another question is all your, is a hundred percent of your stuff right now consignment or how much of it is you seeking out stuff on your own, buying stuff on eBay, buying sh- stuff at shows to flip in your sales as opposed to just consignment. I said it's probably like 60, 40, like 40% my own stuff, 60% consignment. Sometimes that stuff changes. Like when I get back from the national, like, 80% of my card for like the next month or 80% of the stuff in my sale will be from, from the national, but it really just depends on like what's going on, like with my realized st- and stuff outside of cards. Like, can I, can I get to the show? Can I get a bulk, can I get a bulk deal done? I don't really buy for myself anymore. I don't really try. I don't, unless it's like a screaming deal. I don't really buy a, uh, I don't buy individual cars now. It's like mostly like going to shows, picking them up at shows or getting bulk deals. Like bulk deals is huge because more times than not, like a person doesn't want to like, Oh, they have 200 baseball cards. I don't, they don't want to take time to have to do a stack sale to ship them out. Like they, uh, if they're not doing cards full time, they have other job, other responsibilities. So for me, then I can get it, get a bulk deal done. And then I can still make money off on my end they feel the person i'm buying from feels good because like i got this all out of my house now i can go buy a different card and then i can also give the people buying from me good deals as well because i have room on that yeah for sure um max do you have anything before i change the topic a little bit that you want to continue this like the bulk deal idea on i am this is my first national tommy this is not yours right i was there last year yeah you were there last year i was a peon i was i was nothing but a peon last year though uh, my V card is being stripped and I'm ready to hope that it lives up to everything that I can imagine and more, obviously not setting the expectations realistically, but unrealistically, but I, ha- I'm excited that in one week from today, I will be on a train. And just a little insight for the listeners, me and Max have actually never met in person. That's probably a little crazy to say because we've been that's our thirteenth podcast episode together. But I'm extremely excited to meet you in real life, Max. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be cool to like meet you and like uh, do other things that people that have met before do. <laughs> <laughs> like go well, get a che- cheeseburger and fries, right? Big yeah, yeah. And fries sponsored guy. by Saratoga Slabs. <laughs> I'll wine yes. and dine you. <laughs> well, Logan, before we started recording, me and you were having a little chat, which is something that I think was one of the first things we probably bonded over which is just like talking like on a very sociological level about sports and like baseball as a cultural thing Mm -hmm. and just why it's not as popular as it could be um and it's interesting to me that you only sell baseball cards and do you have any thoughts behind that other than baseball is just your favorite sport and you rather not deal with anything else it's funny you say that because like not baseball ha- it's i go back and forth baseball may not even be my favorite sport i i love basketball i love that ba- baseball is my least favorite sport to play growing up basketball was i i love basketball like college basketball there's like the ncaa tournament i don't think there's anything better than that but it's like now that i'm so like i understand baseball more now like i 
I, I I'll say baseball is my favorite sport, and I, I think it's because the baseball card market is is truly I think the easiest to like understand, and there's more. It's not going to touch the LeBrons, the Bradys. It's there's no more than not like Max and I have talked about how like veteran stuff for Brady and LeBron go for crazy prices, and Mike Trout doesn't like t- touch those prices. But I feel like if you're trying to get into cards, it's just easiest to buy. Like, okay, you buy a prospect, you think that will go up, and then he starts to do well, and then you you can sell that prospect. It's like in those other sports, there's like only like five or six guys that are really going to sell well during the season. And it's just to me, it was I under like I said, I understand it the best. And I don't want to tread into anything that I haven't put time into understanding or I haven't put any research into because then I feel like that's where I could end up making poor decisions with my money. And I, as a full-time job, I don't really have room to, to do that necessarily. Jumping on that a little bit more from my experiences selling on eBay, which isn't the most immense, but I do have some stuff under my belt. And although it is mostly baseball tailored, I do list basketball cards and football cards and Pokemon. Yeah. Yes. A little bit of Pokemon on eBay, but with that, I want to say the veteran and the set collectors and the parallels, they have that support in baseball to where you can start up and churn and sell with, you know, low end is riskier, but it does have better margins than high end for the most part. And I haven't had that same experience with basketball parallels and people wanting to do full sets or whatever it may be. Baseball is the root of collecting. Yeah, that's a good point, Max, the set collecting aspect of baseball. I think I, as Kimball says, I suck off continuity, but, you know, baseball has the continuity. Tops has been making baseball cards since 1951 nonstop. Um, That's interesting, Logan, that you talk about, like, how you're kind of, you know, you're basically, you're an expert in baseball cards now. You're not an expert in basketball cards. You're not an expert Mm -hmm. in football cards. Um, As a collector, I try to educate myself in all the realms of things, but I also, you know, am pretty narrow in like what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for like any, any basketball player rookie card. I'm looking for like very specific guys and like very specific years of stuff. Um, Can you, do you want to like, is there any area like gaps in your knowledge? I know like, you mainly sell modern stuff. Have you ever thought about selling vintage stuff? See, vintage stuff is, I, I that's definitely what I want to go into next because I feel like there's a bunch of good deals because vintage is usually, I mean, is o- older collectors have vintage and sometimes they'll use the Beckett, like they'll use the Beckett price guide, which is, I mean, that it, it comps change every single day. So then like sometimes you could have, I don't know, a, Ricky Henderson. I know a buddy who picked up a Ricky Henderson PSA eight that was like at a local car shop for hundred. I think it was one hundred fifty bucks. It sells for like two ninety because a Beckett price guide at one point had it for that, and they just never changed the price sticker on it. So that would definitely be something I want. I'm glad you asked that. That definitely be something I want to move into at some point. But it's just right now. It's like modern. I just I. Un- I have a high level understanding of it. It's just like, so easy. Like I'm going to a card show. Like I know, okay, like this, this card sells for $20 or like this sells for like $5 and, or it's marked at $5 and it sells for $20. And like, I can make 15 bucks off of that or 10, $10. That's why I really try to, uh, try to stay with modern baseball for the most part, because it's just like, it's like, in my brain like that like okay this is a good deal this is not a good deal yeah for sure i think with vintage it's something that i've also like had a lot of trouble with like as someone who grew up you know we're all kind of the same age here like growing up through Mm -hmm. like the early 2000s 2010s i just didn't know like it's a big learning curve for understanding the different sets in vintage like obviously modern Mm -hmm. cards are incredibly complex with like the different parallels and stuff but vintage stuff has like the real condition sensitivity aspect yes. to it that um max we we've talked a little bit about with like minor league team sets and stuff and grading those but i think understanding which vintage sets are very condition sensitive which ones are extremely common and stuff like that is something that 
I just don't know that much about yet. I just haven't done as much deep dives. And that's something I always, I, I like shows because shows is like, you have these vintage dealers that just don't really exist online. These dudes just don't really no. operate on the internet. So that's really your only chance to learn from these people. And I always am asking them questions about like, hey, why do you, where did this weird ass card come from? Or like, what what's up with this? Why is this worth a grand and this one's worth 200 bucks? Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Do you have experiences like that, Logan? Like learning from dealers about like certain sets and stuff? For sure. I mean, I think, and I think a lot of the dealers, like it's like a big thing. If you're willing to listen to them, they love, they love to talk. That's why they're there. Mo most of them are like, they just love to talk about cards so you can pick up different things. I've definitely like, I've asked a couple questions on different things. I'm like, Oh, like why, like you said, like, why is this this much? Or like, why is that this much? And then some guys would be like, Oh, like this is just, this card is, was really consistent condition sensitive and there's only like five of these like in a psa 10 so then like oh like i can go and like see this card for i can i see it at a different table and they have it like 300 dollars lower i'm like okay like so maybe like this is a play now i can talk about for example with like outside of a baseball card even though it was in a baseball set but the 2016 tops chrome kendrick lamar uh i got that in a deal and it was I think I sold it for like 30 or $40 raw. And then I saw it like at a car show in a PSA 10. And the dude was like, Oh, like I was like, how much for it? He was like 25 bucks. I was like, Oh, like I have a 20 on me. Will you take $20 for it? So yeah, I got, that's I got it for 20 line. bucks. God damn. I got one. That's sick. I love that. Line. I, no, I, I fucking I, love that. That's awesome. I, I, I got, I, I wait. You go. Yeah, Max, I will I will say I love I love that line too. I love the the twenty dollar twenty dollar line. And the guy, some one time I was hit it with though, he was like, Oh, but you're telling me you don't have two twenties? And I was like, Okay, you got me there. I'll do I'll do twenty five bucks for it. But yeah, usually that's one thing I will say. Like if you're five dollars off and it's like a twenty five dollar card, don't be afraid just to say twenty dollars because more times than not, people will just say will say yes to it. And cash is king. Cash is king. Yes. Cash um, is king. Uh, one set that I just want to give a shout out to is like 1971 tops is like the black border set. I think it's like a great example of that like condition, condition sensitivity with vintage that I just didn't really understand how that impacts price. So like understanding which sets have really low high pops for like these like PSA 9, 10 cards is something that mm -hmm. I definitely want to, I, I just personally want to learn more about that shit. So that's for something sure. that going into the national, I'm definitely going to be like, asking more dealers asking some of these more vintage dealers especially as i do a lot of um i'm getting more into like non-sport stuff i know this isn't really your guys' realm but like that's that's I love kind of, hearing one about of it. yeah and that and the kendrick lamar you know you bought that card yeah. i mean it is a baseball card but you know it, you know um, yeah but it's one of those rare opportunities to learn in a way that you just can't online really for sure and then like that it like plays into like the 1971 because they remake them now it's like that with the heritage with the heritage now that's a big thing is conditions condition sensitivity on those cards as well. Like Bo Bichette's are like tear like his real one heritage autos are terrible. And if you can get a PSA nine, like that goes for a lot more than a Bo Bichette Topps Chrome PSA nine auto would go for just because the the condition on them. Yeah. And that's like if you were just getting into collecting and you were looking at eBay, you'd be like, Why the fuck is this autograph worth so much more than this other autograph? Yeah. Like that doesn't really make that much sense. Um and it's not like, yeah. And Logan, I really appreciate you coming on and like being a great guest. I think me and Max talk, I have like tried to talk a lot about lately, like what we want to do with the podcast, like kind of the goals that we have with it. And one of the goals is just like having people on talking about their experiences in the hobby in a way that's not just who are you buying? Who are you selling? Like what, like what's your experience? What, like, what are things that you learned that maybe you don't, you think other people don't know about that isn't, go buy josh allen qb rookie cards or whatever like stuff like that i agree with that because anybody can tell you to go like buy josh allen or buy patrick mahomes or buy, buy Tatis. Top, buy, or, okay but that that one that that's the easy yes you buy a tati if anybody's listening to this right now if you want if you want free money tatis is by far the most free money in baseball right now he is <laughs> and max max and I, don't usually agree on things we kind of go back we do from a high level we agree on a lot of stuff but we bicker a little bit back and forth on on things but we 100 percent agree on Tatis is such a buy right now but i i like that because i feel like nobody 
you're going to learn more as a listener or somebody watching YouTube, not from necessarily what they're buying or like why they're buying it. Like, okay, like this was a great deal because these cards go for $30 and it was a $5 card, or this is a condition sensitive. So this was a great card for a PSA 10 because the market changes daily. So one week it could be Josh Allen's buy next week. Justin Herbert's the buy or two is the buy, or we talking about baseball. Bobby Witt's the buy one week. Julio Rodriguez is by one week. It's just all hot cards are the buys and the sells. But the way you get to that point or why you're doing this, I feel like is so much more important if you're trying to learn about cards. 100%. Um, Max, do you have anything you want to add to that? I concur. You concur. I, well, Logan, I don't, I want to leave some meat on the bone for our next episode. Like, cause we obviously going to have you on again at some point. And what I've been trying to do with Max is trying to cut us off while we're hot. So we kind of leave some the sure. people wanting for the next episode but uh for sure. before we go is there anyone else that you like want to shout out as really important to your collecting journey before uh we yes i i i'll probably leave some people off so like everybody knows who you are but obviously you do um are very good friends of mine i've loved all the conversations we've had um i gotta give a shout out to jake t cards he's not really in cards anymore but he was the first person i bought from he really Help me with things. Always answer my questions. Uh, certified sports cards uh, is a great, great person to learn from as well. He actually taught me how to do take pictures. So he was why I have really good pictures. He told me about that. And of course, I got to give a shout out to uh, Saratoga Slabs. Uh, he's a great person. Great follow on Twitter. Um, one of my best friends in cards. Talk to him daily. Talk to him and Max daily. So, yeah. Shout out, Alex amazing like one of the most loyal fault like listeners to the podcast too so alex shout out uh to you uh but thanks again logan um wait is your girlfriend gonna get pissed at you if you don't give a shout out to her for supporting you oh yeah Uh, you know you're right you're right no i i that's the one the one i forgot because it's thinking just a card people but she is very supportive um she helped me with my first couple stack sales She's all, she's always telling me to go to card shows to travel and everything. I hate the cliche of, oh, your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. They hate cards because I, I, I feel like that's then that's on them because you can find somebody that will support you in that. And she does a phenomenal job of it. Listens to me talk about cards all the time. So she probably gets the number one shout out because I would not be here without her. So yeah, shout, shout, out, out. shout out to you, Allie. Shout, shout out, out to, to Allie. Um, and to all the listeners out there don't like there's so many people in this world who do not have a direction don't really care about anything too much if you show that you really care about cards and are like really passionate about it and if someone hates on you for that they suck like they just not like if they're they're, not supporting you like that's whack and they're jealous too because you have there's a lot there's a lot of jealousy with that because you have you found something that you enjoy and people will try to cut that down so just keep doing your thing. And if you're listening to this, for some reason you found this and you don't have a lot of people like cards, hop on Twitter and start following a bunch of card people and you'll you'll be involved in a great community. 100%. Um, this is a great ending. Max, you want to you wanna say anything positive here at the end? <laughs> cards. Cards. <laughs> cards. Cards. All right. Well, thanks. Shout out to everyone who listens. Uh, make sure... We're trying to make a push to do some more reviews. So if you do listen to the podcast, give us some give us some reviews. That'd be dope. And uh, we also are on YouTube. So if you're into YouTube, I'm gonna start putting more shorts out there. Uh, post some clips if you miss an episode and just want to like tune into like a quick little bit of what we talked about. So sounds good. Thanks, Logan, for being on. It's definitely not the last time you're gonna be on. Make sure to follow him at Logan's League on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm at TV Sports Cards on Twitter, at TV Sports Cards on Instagram. And if you know who has at TV Sports Cards on Instagram, let me know because I want to pay them money to take that. And Max is at Cards Max on Twitter, at Cards Max on Instagram. We will see you guys from live from the National next week. Um, this has been super fun. We'll see you guys next week.